Do we have a sound now? Is there a sound? Do we have a sound now? Is there? A, yeah, I, this is actually pretty bad. I don't know what's wrong with the with the mic, the external mic. I hope this doesn't sound too bad because I'm actually using the microphone right on the camera. The camera's microphone and if, if that's uh <laughs> just let me know if that is bad i don't know to be honest i don't know what's wrong with the maybe it's the microphone that's not compatible with the, with the whole system but the sound should come from from the camera but there might be something wrong but sorry about that again that is um, really annoying when there is some problems with the with the sound and i hope that the the microphone is not too too bad but let's let's start right away with with some questions that I already got before the live stream started and welcome everybody I see some familiar names here and hi there Robin you're also here how you doing and how is uh, 1957 Plato doing and William Hansen hi there who is Seraphin hi there we have a lot of Lord Vader is here we have a lot of familiar names it's always nice to nice to see you all all here but we need to start with the first question it was about a lens and um, it was Vincent asking for about a lens about a wide-angle lens and the, the previous comment was uh, that uh, he has the EM10 uh, mark 3 and what fixed lens do I recommend for this type of photography, travel photography, street photography, including church museums. And he had some uh, own suggestions like the 17 millimeter lens, 1.8, and then two Panasonic lenses, 15 or 20. I would say between these three lenses, if you have an Olympus camera, of course, the first choice would be a Zuiko lens. But of course, you might want to check out the prices of, of the Panasonic 15 or 20 they're pretty close to each other and, and there's not much difference in in focal length or the fastest aperture so i would say that it all depends on the price if you can i would get one of those that that is uh, the cheapest one because they're all good between the 17 millimeter olympus lens and the panasonic 15 millimeter lens 20 millimeter lenses may be a bit too tight if you if you're walking around in the in the streets and, and going inside churches and want to have a bigger view then i would probably go with the 17 or the 15 and it depends on on the price i haven't tested the panasonic lenses so i can't really really say how good those lenses are but i know that the 17 millimeter is a, is a good lens <clears throat> And let's go and see if there are any other questions already here. A lot of familiar names. Oh, yeah, William just got a new 75 millimeter f1.8 lens. And he was, uh, you know, showing some pictures and, and also the box as a photograph in the, in the Facebook group of my channel. And if you're interested in joining the, the Facebook group, please, uh, there is a link in the description. So there are, I think, almost... I haven't really checked how many people there are already, but it, it's it's almost two thousand, I think. And we, they people share a lot of a lot of pictures there, and I comment them every now and then. And about pictures, I do have an assignment going on. It's it's about light and shadow. And if you go to my channel, you can find the video. It, it was um, I think a week ago I made a video, and and. Um, Nowadays, I'm doing so that I will make the assignment video in the beginning of the month and then in the end of the month will be the feedback uh, live stream because they've been requested that people want to have a bit more time. But the downside might be that uh, when you have a really short time, you just send the image immediately now because I've gotten a lot less images than, than before. And maybe that's people are waiting and then they forget about it. So it's a reminder, if you have anything that is doing with light and shadow, you know, the light uh, making the image and shadows being part of the image. But uh, check out the light and shadow video 
that I made. It's a one of the longest videos I've ever made that is not a live stream. It's almost, I think it's over 20 minutes, but there's lots of lots and lots of stuff about light. And what's important, shadows too, which I think is the, even though light is needed for a photograph, but I would say that uh, shadows are equally important because without shadows, there is no 3D images. Everything is flat and 2D. And, and that can be good sometimes, but as a general rule in photography, something that you should avoid unless you're doing this so-called deadpan type of photography which is of course one way of doing photography and i actually do it quite a lot but i still like like to have really you know sometimes nice shadows and, and to make all that or everything 3d and i think that's that's really important but let's see what we have some questions but remember to check out that video and send them send your image Sound is back. Yeah, that's good. Oh, Robert. <clears throat> Robin is saying, now that Matti is no longer with Panasonic, get him to talk about Olympus. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I have to talk. You you have to talk to Matti too, Robin. And I don't know if he, he's... Uh, doing something else also and I, I know i know a few things that i'm not going to say here because it's not my channel but he's he has some interesting stuff coming coming to into his channel or the other topics so that'd be sure to if you haven't subscribed to his channel do so because he has some really interesting stuff coming up but we have to have to talk to him both of us robin to <laughs> for him to start making more olympus content All right. Hello, Marcia from Boy Bond Beach, Florida. There is a lot of people from Florida. Yeah, I know uh, Plato is saying that he had an Olympus camera once, but he declined to say why he chose the Lumix. Well, I know, but it's not up to me just to to get into that. It's it's if he doesn't want to, you know, talk about it, then it's sort of I'm not going to tell the history of but I know know the, the whole story but unfortunately I can't really tell about that yeah but he he has been shooting with Alan Bush And this is an interesting question from Plato what developments do you expect in photography in the near future if any uh, I don't really know about if, if we're not talking about the gear, but the photography, and I, I'm not really sure what what's going to happen. But I think the the ongoing uh, thing about uh, not editing images that much, like retouching portraits and stuff like that, I think that will change because there have been a lot of magazines that be saying that they won't do that uh, beauty retouching anymore, and and images becoming more real realistic in that sense and i think that's something that will happen because of course when everything is new about digital you can do retouching and, and every almost everybody can do it in in some some regards but i think that's something that will will change and then of course i'm not sure how it's going to be when we do get cameras with higher uh, pixel amount in videos like 8k even more maybe in the future is it going to be so that people will start uh, grabbing uh, stills from the moving uh, image or, or like a video that you shoot somebody, let's say a portrait, you, you just let the camera roll and the model do, do, do her or his thing and then you grab a still from the video. That's something that I predicted many, many years ago. And I've actually seen one uh, example. It was a red camera way back in, let's, if I say 2018 in Photokina, they had the, kind of like a small workshop where they used used red cameras for for um, model shoot. And but the, of course, at the time, the the camera was over hundred thousand dollars, so it wasn't for everybody. But but it, it was on its way, and I think that that might be something. And that's also something that I I would love to test if 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 I had a camera maybe in the future i do have 8k maybe 10k cameras we don't know but at the moment you know 4k is the is kind of like the the top amount of of pixels in video but you could grab 
a pretty good shot from that. But of course, we do have the the problem with uh, a frame, uh, not not the frame rate, but the shutter speed. Because if it's a moving subject and we use the normal shutter speed for video, then there is going to be a motion blur. So we have, might need to have faster shutter speeds, and then the video doesn't look that good. But we do have the still that might be might be good. That's something that maybe I try with with 4K camera. I don't know, but that, that's probably something that might be in the future. Then uh, there is a question about anyone heard when Olympus 8 to 25 millimeter f4 comes? No, we haven't heard anything about that yet. I know it's in the lens roadmap, but they haven't said when, and we we just have to wait. I hope it, that it will be reality very soon because uh, I've said many times in my videos that uh, OMDS should, you know, launch something because to, to, just to have the, the credibility because people are getting patient and uh, are not or people are not patient enough to to wait if, if we get the next camera late next spring maybe or in the in the or late this year that might be i don't know maybe too late not sure hope that they will will introduce that because that 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 is an interesting lens and i really like the the fact that they are doing this f4 lenses the 12 to 45 yeah 12 to 45 is a, is a marvelous lens it's nice and small I, I really like that lens oh yeah lord red is that news about david thorpe yeah that is that is a that is a pity i, I really liked his videos and that that's that's really sad that's it's what you know we all have a certain amount of time time here and, and we never know what's going to happen so but but I know, yeah, it is a sad, sad, sad thing. Let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, this is also interesting, like William Hansen said, that most people are watching on phone or tablet, so I would say that 180p is enough for video. Yeah, it is enough for, uh, uh, what do you call? presenting the video or uploading it to to YouTube for example most most watch you know using mobile connections and, and they might not be that that fast so yeah full HD is good but filming in 4k is is good because then you can crop if you if you import uh, 4k footage to a full HD timeline you have a lot more possibilities to crop the image and that's why <laughs> I like to do a, a full HD because I then I have the ability to crop my my videos because you know I s sometimes say funny things and I want to cut out some words then I can just make a jump cut which which makes my life a lot easier and the content a bit, lot better but you're right a lot of people watch watch uh, YouTube on on their mobiles and they you know the bandwidth isn't just enough with with their with their uh, connections or, or so that they, they they will watch it on full HD. Let's see. And Catherine is asking, is there a special technique using the Olympus converters? I seem to lose a lot of sharpness. I don't really have had a, a big problem with losing quality. What lenses are you using? You have the 40 to 150 or the 300. And I, I, is there anyone who has uh, any similar uh, experiences with the with the extenders? Because I, I I really don't have a problem with that. Of course, it's not as sharp as the uh, the uh, uh, image without it. But then, of course, it's it's a lot lot more uh, reach and a lot more millimeters in length. So it could be the uh, shutter speed if it might be too long and you might get some some shake in your images maybe their camera is moving but if there's anyone who's who has similar com things and comments just please let, let us know and, and and help catherine because I, I i to be honest haven't had really big problems with that uh 
Well, there is someone. To know about this commercials data recovery Sweden. Well, I guess. Yeah, Mac, I, I think uh, Catherine was talking about uh, teleconverters. That that's what I understood. Not really sure, but if if it's not that, then then please let us know. Uh, let's see. And then who is Seraphin asking? Watch your video a few weeks ago on shooting low ISO setting that shows up as ISO sixty four, and I've been using it a lot with results I like, I quite like, and I avoided it since the first EM one. Yeah, that the the low ISO isn't actually that bad. You lose a bit of the dynamic range, but uh, you will have, I think, m richer colors and also less noise. And I, I really like the ISO sixty four. It's it's a good. I usually use it when it's really sunny weather and I can use really fast shutter speeds and and the between. It's like like a stop and a half slower. But I think it's it's a good way of doing. But you will lose a bit bit um, dynamic range but not that much that is actually a problem but it is a good a good way of of using the extended iso on the higher end i wouldn't really use the the extended iso if, if it goes really above let's say 6400 12 to 800 maybe maybe uh, 12800 sorry maybe maybe sometimes but but it's not not the, the best with micro four thirds And, and let's look at this. Um, Mr. Cheng is saying that same using an OM lens 50 millimeter f3.5 macro on an Olympus OMD uh, M5 Mark II. How to uh, hard to take sharp images? Yeah, that's because the lenses from the past are a bit different. Because you, you during the film era, it didn't matter in which angle the light hit the film. But with uh, digital, you need to have the light hit in a straight angle. If the light comes like this, it doesn't work. And that's why the lenses are constructed a bit different and you have a bit different look with the with the older lenses. It doesn't, I'm not saying that they are bad, but they're different. You, you have a bit of a different look and, and some of the lenses do really nicely. Like the, I think Helios 44 millimeter lens, uh, of Helios 44, which is 58 millimeter lenses, is really nice. That has a really, nice rendering and, and really good bokeh so that's that's a nice lens but i haven't really had any troubles with the 50 millimeter om lens that i have it's it's a bit different and it's not as sharp but, but it's a, it's a, it's a good lens but of course if you have a macro then it might be a bit of a different thing you need to have more sharp images than than just general street photography for example with the 50 millimeter which is a bit long for street, but it's uh, I've been using it sometimes. It's 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 a lot of fun. And this is always interesting. And if you were to go to a few national parks in the United States, what would be your must bring lenses? Well, that depends on a lot about what are you going to shoot. If you're more of a landscape, and then you might have a real wide angle for those landscapes and if you're doing wildlife or want to do landscapes with a longer lens then maybe a longer lens and if you have uh, any any pro lenses that that uh, are the the 12 to 40 and then to 40 to 150 i would take those two lenses and maybe maybe if you're more for wildlife then something longer maybe a teleconverter and if you are more for landscape then something wider that's probably the selection that I would take or any other, you know, focal lengths from that range. It doesn't really, it doesn't have to be a pro lens, of course, but that, that's those, those are a bit better, but I would probably go with those lenses. Yeah, this is also, also, uh, if you want to get better results and less noise in your images to use DxO's software, like the DxO Deep Prime, is that deep prime or you know pure pure raw sorry pure raw that uses deep prime uh, noise reduction and then they also have lens module for different uh, combinations of of cameras and lenses and will correct them a lot better than for example lightroom and that's something 
do I, I really recommend you try that because and it's dxo.com where you can find those softwares and i think they have a sale in may so that they have minus 30 percent and that's that's something worth to try if you don't want to get the whole photo lab 4 which is a full image editing software which has a lot a lot of tools and, and bells and whistles to do and it's a bit overwhelming if you haven't used it before then if you don't want that in the the deep uh, not the deep prime the pure raw is something that you might consider that's that's a really really something let's see what else um, what else do we have and then there's a question for street photography do you prefer aperture priority shutter priority or manual what i usually use is aperture priority but if i know that i have to stop fast motion then i might might use uh, shutter priority or even p mode which is pretty good you can you can set the camera to p mode and then you can change the combination from the back wheel or the front wheel whatever suits better for you and that's also a good way to do it but the the, the main thing is that i very seldom use manual in in, in action photography i only use manual in, in video and if i'm using a external flashlights then it's of course i need to do that or i do some hdr or i do some panoramic images of some special cases but normal uh, photography it's it's either a or p for me but that depends as i said if you have something really fast moving object then you might want to use shutter priority so that you can set the shutter so that you have a totally tack sharp moving subject or if you want a certain amount of motion blur for example cars or or moving or walking people then you can might have some certain uh, shutter speed In, um, this is uh uh, interesting question. Is it simple to tell how, uh, how to determine the shutter count on Olympus camera? I just wonder how many images have been taken. I think Robin has a video about this on his channel. If he's still here, please tell you if, you're, if you still have that video or do I remember correctly? Because uh, it's a certain uh, uh, way of pushing the buttons in the back. I don't remember how it goes, but I think Robin has a video about that so go check out his channel and I, I guess he's still here and he might he might tell you uh let's see and then yeah i do i do have uh the olympus 17 millimeter but i don't uh, have a, a a review of the panasonic panasonic lens and there i know that uh, rob trek Jimmy Cheng, Robin, and I, we all have, you know, tested every lens almost. So you might want to check out those channels also. But but about the Panasonic 15 mm, I don't. I, I might that would that could be a good good comparison and, and test them side by side. Maybe I I'll see if if uh, I can get a hold of that Panasonic 15 mm. That would be a good good. Uh, Or a lens to test and a good good uh, comparison lens yeah and about the manual mode astrophotography too exactly good point very good point william and yes robin has a video about how to figure out the shutter count in your camera robin do you remember the name so it's for for uh, sorry uh, range writer so he can he can find it a bit easier. Oh, Matt, uh, you probably William. Do you mean the the Panasonic 15 millimeter lens? Maybe I'll ask if he still has it. I don't know if he has sent his Panasonic stuff away because he's not no no uh, not an ambassador anymore. So he might have sent those lenses back. I'm not really sure. 
And okay, here is uh, Jakob Soegard. He said, I bought the Panasonic 15 millimeter. It was an offer, $200. It's fine. That's a good, good deal. If you can get that lens for $200, then go for that. I, I bet it's a, it's a good lens. It's most likely a good lens, so no problem with that. But I will I will ask Matti if he still has it, and maybe maybe I can loan it for the weekend and, and make a video for about it next week if, if he's if he has it. I don't know, but let let's see what I can do. Yeah, and uh, if you want to find out how to make the cut shutter shutter count, then just sh search Robin's channel. Yeah, good. Go 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 to his channel but not yet not yet after this live stream <laughs> now just go ahead if, if you need the 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 information right now just go ahead and i was um reminding you again that uh, i do have a assignment going on during this may it's about light and shadow and the, the whole point is to to look for light and look for shadows because you, you need light to have shadows and you need light to have, you know, photographs cannot be made without any light. And actually the word photography comes from the Latin word that means drawing with light. So we need light in order to, to grab some images. But then when we have light, we do have also shadows and shadows well yeah there could be shadows but then we then if, if it's if it's if it's all about shadows then it's darkness and and without shadows we don't have any 3d everything will be flat and that's one of the most important things and also what's important about light and shadow is the the direction of the light because then if you have light coming from the sides then you will have more form or more feel of a 3d scene in your in your photographs and that's that's one of the most important things to understand how light affects the the mood the uh, the uh, 3d feeling of an image and also of course then you have white balance which is part of the mood and how to uh, kind of like uh, make the colors and and what uh, color is the image itself but on that video, I did not talk about white balance. I got a couple other videos about white balance in my channel. So, but there is a link, link in the light and shadow video. And th the last day to send your image is the 26th of this month. So, and I will have the live stream on 27th where I will go through those images. Let's see. Hello from Linz, Austria. And then a million dollar question. When are you going to visit Bornholm? I will. I promise that I will. It's an interesting place and I will visit, but I don't know when because of the the situation with traveling is not well at its best right now, but I will figure out how to get. Another place that I want to go to is the Guernsey, Guernsey Island, which is which is part of Britain, but it's pretty close to France and and I know one of one of uh, my followers and, and, and um, a great photographer, Sam Thompson, lives there. And I, I just would love to have a photo walk with him because I, I like his style a lot. And um, uh, yeah, the pro problem is uh, that, OK, there is the, that's the link for the shutter account. The problem is that um, I've. Uh, disabled links during the chat because uh, sometimes you, I get some uh, spam links on the on the stream and sometimes I just cannot dot, uh, what do you call uh, monitor all the comments that much so that's why I've, I've unfortunately have to have been forced to do that so that there won't be any spam uh. And yeah, it's about the 15 millimeter. I compared the 15 millimeter, my Olympus 12 to 40, 2.8, and they look equally sharp. Yeah, most likely they are. And so, so in that sense, it's no, no problem getting the 15 millimeter. And, and if it's if the price is around 200 dollars, it's it's a, it's it's a good deal. I would go with that. And then about flash systems, uh, Olympus flash system or Godox flash system, which one to invest in? 
I do have um, Godox studio flashes, but I don't have any Godox, um, you know, speed lights. So I, I can't really say how good they are. But the Godox uh, studio flashes are really top notch. So I would think that the Godox uh, speed lights are very good quality. And most likely, don't know exact prices, but I would say that those Godox flashes are not that expensive because that's why I have those studio flashes. They are so much more or inexpensive, more in, uh, inexpensive than, than many other brands. So I would I would check the, the prices of Godox. But of course, the radio system in, in uh, Olympus flashes is really good too. So, I, I, but I would check with the Godox flashes first. I don't know if, if there are any who has those could help Rahul with, with his um, question. Yeah, this is very important that Thomas Chisowska says, with light, you have a white piece of paper with shadows you can draw on that paper. Exactly. That's why, that's how it is. If you want to draw an apple, usually what we do is to make the, draw the shadow to make it 3D. And it's exactly the same thing in photography. If, if it's just a flat light, then the apple will be flat. You don't, you don't have the 3D feeling and you don't have the feeling of material either if you don't have a directional light. And that's that's really important. <clears throat> and Moises Bias photographer, are you planning on visiting New York City anytime soon? Oh, I would love to visit New York City, but not anytime soon because we don't know this, the about the virus situation here. And Funny that you said the New York, uh, because I just uh, found or I knew that I had them. These are old hard drives from my computer that has been sitting in a drawer here in my office. The reason they've been there because I thought they were broken. Then I got this um, uh, thing that I can read them with my Mac and I did managed to get those images or save those images and there i was watching old images from from new york and that was the trip from 2011 when i was there that was i've been there two times after that but that was a fun trip i remember traveling with my wife and my daughter that was it's a fun trip and it was really nice to see those images but yeah New York City is one of my favorite cities. It's 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 a nice nice place. Yeah, you're welcome, Tim. I hope you can get your image to the feedback. I bet you can. <clears throat> how is the situation in Finland, and how is looking for next 2022 September? Well, it's a uh, it has been getting better and people have been vaccinated quite a lot. I think they are starting to vaccinate under 40, uh, I mean, under 50. And, um, but we don't know what's going to happen. The decline of, of uh, infection has kind of like stopped and it's going a bit up again. And the reason is that we've had a really, really nice, nice and warm weather and people have been having parties outdoors and maybe that's that's the reason but i don't know really what's going to happen but i hope everything is going to be fine in 2020 september if it's not we will still we will be still indoors for for another year and i think it's it's been enough already oh the faro island is also a must yeah that's some some place that i really wanted to go but never been there and uh, if they are totally free of Corona, then they might not let people in from countries where who are not free from Corona. So I don't know if it's possible to travel there. Uh, that's a good idea. You can have a photo walk competition with Matti. You on Olympus camera with the 15 millimeter and Matti with the Lumix and the Olympus 17 millimeter. Yeah, that could that could work. That could probably be a a good idea and yeah we are planning on making videos together this summer 
again we, we haven't been doing that for for of course you know we started and then then everything went bizarre with the with the virus and then you know we had to stop it and it's well we haven't just gotten around to it yet but we will this summer we will do some don't know what the format will be but maybe some photo challenges or or something like that because that would that would be that would be cool because it's it's a lot of fun to make videos with Matisse and he's a lot of fun all right um, Mm. How long are your trainings takes uh, your training takes for Olympus and coaching to be a better in photography? Well, it depends as long as you want. I sell them one hour by one hour, but of course we can figure out some special deals if you if you want to have more hours, but that's can be found in my in my web store and you can have a there is a link in the description where you can find that one-on-one -on -one sessions and then i do have one-on-one -on -one sessions about cameras too so you'd be free to check those out well this is also a very common questions about uh, best lenses for street photography and portraits if we talk about classic street photography first usually what they used was a and now we're talking micro four uh micro four thirds terms they used 17 millimeters or 12 millimeters and then some used 25 so something of a standard and wider that that was usually the way the classic street photographers did and the reason was that they wanted to be quite close and of course you have tight spots in the streets to photograph you need to have a bit wider angle and that's why they used that and it became kind of like a street photography standard to have a a 17 millimeter or if we're talking about the full frame terms you, you had 35 millimeter which is almost the, or the equivalent micro four third lens is 17 millimeters and that was usually the, the the what they did but of course it doesn't really have to be that lens you can use any lens, of course, but if you want to go with the traditional style, I, I would say that 17 or 25, something between there would be totally fine. And then about portraits, if we start with classical portraits then and micro four thirds terms, then 45 millimeter is the, is the perfect focal length for portrait because it renders the perspective quite nicely. If you, if you have too wide, then you will have a big nose. And if you have too long, then it will squeeze your head. The model's head and, and with 45 you you get a nice nice shape or nice 3d shape that looks natural that's why but of course again you can use if especially if you are in in an environment and you want to show so the surroundings then you might want to have a bit wider lens maybe 25 or even 17. it, it doesn't really matter it all depends on on your style there's no right answer to this but as I said, classical street photography, 17 millimeters, classical portraits, 45 millimeters. That's that's kind of like the, the way to start. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Yeah, that'll be that'll be totally cool if you come to or when you come. I know that you you planned on coming to Finland whenever it's possible. We will we will figure out something and I I will help you. Uh let sorry, let's take this one first. 12 mm f2 for street. I think William is talking about the street photography and the portraits. And yeah, 75 is amazing. But the problem with 75 is that you need to be a bit too far from the model. I, I've had a few portrait sessions or corporate uh, photo sessions and I've used 75 so I can be a bit further away because of the situation. But otherwise I like to use 45. You, you kind of like close enough with the model so that you can communicate and you have your own, you know, because portraiture is all about communications with the model. You, you need to, you know, kind of like click together so that you you can get the best images if, if 
the photographer is way back there you don't you lose the connection and the model is kind of lost in the in the scene and, and that's not usually good but 75 that's that's a beautiful lens it's one of the best lenses it's really really nice uh yeah and then how about using olympus md lenses with adapter with uh, m5 with adapter yeah it's it's possible it's possible and no problem with that i've, I've i do have a few uh, not md lenses but yes it is possible if you have the right uh adapter then yes it's possible yeah this one is the one if people are asking which one to get the 45 to f 1.8 is is one of the best money can buy lenses from olympus it's it's not very expensive but the quality is stunning for portraits it's, it's really really beautiful lens and, and so good rahul dar says have you tried uh, helios 44 two for portraits and swirly blurry is magical can get get can get that with any modern lens yeah i know i do have that helios 44 lens just because it has a such a nice bokeh and i've used it a few times not really that much that that uh, i should but uh it's it's a marvelous lens so if it and that's some some lenses and if you can get it somewhere used that that's a beauty that lens is a beauty yeah about i in some video i said that i will make some portraiture videos and yes i will this summer i will have a series of different videos about how to photograph people that's that's my plan mm, let's see and what kind of situation 300 million prime is useful well it's uh, for wildlife and bird photography mainly that's where they use it and of course sports photography could be too but i don't i haven't really seen any one using that in, in sports because olympus is not being used with among sports photographers that much and there are there was one big reason is that they don't have the same uh, uh, infrastructure for services for big event big events and that's why for example canon is a big major uh, camera in, in sports photography because they have a huge pro service system for sports photographers they you know when there is olympics they have you know tons and tons of personnel for for those photographers and that that's a whole different ball game so that's why it's really hard to get into sports photography what we're talking about the manufacturers but it could be you know bird photography wildlife and sports um, let's see yeah, this is interesting about Raymond Photo Austria is saying that he is uh, doing filming about Master Zheng locations and talking to film directors and the production team, Mariana Films. Yeah, there was a film called uh, Master Zheng that was filmed in, in northern part of Finland in Lapland. And uh, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I will watch that. And, and Raymond is coming to Finland when, when it's possible to, to do some reportage on that. And that's that's going to be interesting. <clears throat> yeah if, if uh, william is talking about the 5200 millimeter i do have that yes well uh mf2 or mf3 bigger uh, and those are the best ones at the moment they're not really inexpensive they're actually quite expensive but mf3 I would get if the lens and the body is weather sealed because that mf3 is weather sealed can you make a video on infrared photography for omd systems actually i do have a a video about infrared i made it way back a couple of three, almost three years ago when i had an infrared filter it's a it's a di bit different thing if you have converted your camera to infrared i haven't done that but that could be something that i've sometimes planned to do and the same thing is that i've also planned that i would uh, convert my old em1 to be a totally black and white 
camera, but I haven't done that either. But uh, that, that's something to, to consider too. But there is, if you go to my channel and, and search for infrared photography, you can find one, one video from, from way back. And actually, at least here in, in, in Northern Hemisphere, when we do have spring, and of course in Southern Europe, it's almost summer, we do have the foliage or the green leaves now. And that looks really good in infrared when, when everything that's green is going to be pure white. It's, it's really beautiful. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll go and make a video about infrared with that infrared filter. Maybe I'll do another video about it. Let's see. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, Bobby Malice Malicetti, a, a good question. Would you go to forest with a 300 millimeter prime or 100 to 400 zoom? Well, that's a tough question because um, the 300 millimeter is a bit faster. It's f4 and uh, the 100 to 400 is, is it 5.6 to 6.3 if I remember correctly. It's a one stop to two stops slower. So if it's a really dark forest, then you might want to have the 300. But of course, then the 100 to 400 is more versatile. You have a zoom, you get more opportunities. And of course, it has more reach. So that, that's, to be honest, that's a tough question. I, I don't know. I don't have either of those lenses. But if I would buy a longer lens now, I would probably get to 100 to 400 because 300 is, is fixed uh, focal length and in, it's maybe not that suitable for me. And then, of course, the 150 to 400 millimeter is too expensive. So I would get to 100 to 400. I think that that's a that's a good lens. I've tested it a couple of times. And let's see what else do we have here. Yeah, that is true. The the 12 to 40 f 2.8 will cover most standard photography situation, in my opinion. Yeah, it's one of those go to lenses. It's a real high quality lens and, and it can cover almost everything and that's something if, if i would only have one zoom lens that would probably be it so that, that that's just a no-brainer it's one of those standard zoom lenses that everybody should have is it the pro version or or the kit lens 14 to 42 it's about the same focal length of course it's it's a bit different lens and it's not as fast and it's not a pro lens but you know the, the focal length and the, the versatility of the lens is about the same and let's see. Yeah, Rahul Dar says that uh, that Matty was uh, Matti Solanto. I think he's talking about was testing the Leica black and white uh, camera. Yeah, I could, but the problem is that um, it's not very easy to get access to it. Matti has some connections that I don't, and that's why he got the possibility to test it because it's very rare to be able to test a Leica camera with that price range because there aren't any available really. Usually they don't want to open the packages because then Leica people won't buy it. They want to have the package unopened. So that's that's something that's so so most likely I cannot. It'd be interesting though. I can say that. Oh, this is an interesting question from William. My friend mentioned something about the E1 Mark III and the 8mm Pro lens has some problems with the starry sky. Did you notice that when you got Mark III has ended up just sticking with the manual focus? Oh, I did test it and there was no problem. When it was when E1 Mark III was uh, brand new in my first impression when it was uh, launched, I did test the 8mm and the starry. Starry AF, Starry Sky AF is, is the official name, and it would work fine. I didn't have any problems with that. It might struggle if you do have a lot of uh, uh, light pollution, then it might struggle a bit. But uh, if you have really dark night and no no light pollution or, or very little light pollution, it should work totally fine. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is also an interesting, interesting. I switched 12 to 40 to 12 to 100 millimeters as William, and that's yeah, that's also a good, good lens. It's a 
12 to 100 millimeter i've tested it a couple of times but i don't have it i don't know why actually it would be totally good for for video for example because it has a very good good image stabilizer in the lens so it would work sync is that we that would be interesting to to test again but it's a, it's a stop slower so that's why i've been sticking with 12 to 40 but it would be a a good travel lens too even though it's a bit bit big for my likings but it's a, it's a very quality high quality lens yeah and then uh what is my opinion about the seven to three hundred mm olympus lens i couldn't find your review of that lens actually i haven't made a review of that lens that's something also in the making next summer when i can get hold of one hopefully uh i've tested it a few times and it's it's totally fine between 275 to 200 250 at 300 is it is a bit soft that that's always the case it's like the 12 to 200 millimeter it's totally fine from up to 150 175 but it's not bad but it is a bit soft but of course i know that uh, uh, for example yari peltomaki a finnish uh, bird photographer usually has one of those when he goes uh traveling uh, with his family and so that he can you know grab a few bird photog photographs while traveling so that's that's one uh, good example of using that lens and it's not bad but i but it's not as sharp at 300 as as uh, it is 250 200 but if you can live with that no problem with that but i will try to make a, a test with this this summer let's see what else do we have i wonder what is all right there is some spam again oh no oh my gosh i don't wonder how how could i do this i don't have time to block every every user just sorry i need to block a few of these they are just spamming i wonder how could i block the word is there a way to block words here maybe i'll just a minute I will go to to my just just a minute I will have a short break and I will block some words there and there it is Settings. Let's see if that works. And let's see if that works. Uh, where is my... There it is. All right, and now they are. Oh my gosh, this is. Uh... Someone is having a lot of fun here. Some... I will start blocking. I will be pl blocking. Yep, 
uh, somebody is um, Think you need to do them single blocks just take your time yeah there is this is totally totally you know can't do anything about this so this these are these i will start blocking this so I'll just block them. Sorry, we'll take a This has happened to me once before. Somebody's uh... I'll just um All right, let's see if All right, let's go <laughs> let's continue. Thanks for for being patient and being here. There's Fernando from Argentina. Hi there. And then uh, Rahul Dari is asking, what Panasonic primes do you recommend as they are cheaper than Olympus lenses, at least here in Australia? I do have the 25 f 1.7. Unfortunately, I don't really know those lenses that much. Uh, I haven't really tested Panasonic lenses that much. So I, I, unfortunately, I can't really say, say for sure. That is something that I, I know I should have done earlier, but I haven't really got around to it. I, there were, been so many lenses from Mzuko to test first, but let's see what I can do in the future. And um, yeah, and then uh, Randy is saying it's just got back out shooting wildlife with the 100 to 400 and 300 Pro. Sure need practice. Yeah, that's true. It is. It is something that you'd really need to practice if if you're using long lenses and. Something that might help is the EE1 uh, uh, spot finder or the, the, the small finder that you put in, 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 in the cold shoe or the hot shoe mount, which will help you to to um, find the subject. Because it's not really, if you have a flying bird out there and you're trying to find it with a long lens, it's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. It's, it's actually quite hard to find. And I think the, the spammers have been... <laughs> has gone maybe i blocked them all and now it's they they kind of got bored with that but those those are really uh -huh. um, and then let's talk about what is needed for food photography camera lens and what kind of light natural flash well i would start with natural light because uh, using flash and and photographing food is really hard it's really really hard because you need to have big uh, soft boxes and uh, and uh, all that because you you the you can't really have a lot of hard light on or, or you can but it's it's a lot harder to have hard light well it's a funny thing to say hard light is hard yes you need to have big soft boxes but if you have a big window for example and you put the table in front of the 
big window and you have all that window light come towards and then you photograph it from this side you will get a really nice results and then maybe have some reflectors to reflect the light back if, if there is a too big of a of a um, uh, what, what do you call this um, contrast so that that's something to start with and uh, for lenses I would go with uh, a bit longer lens like the the product photography 25 millimeter 45 millimeter when we're talking about micro four thirds I think that's a good start oh thank you so much appreciate it okay this is an interesting question uh which camera and lens is good for shooting youtube videos i know sony a7 uh s3 but it is too expensive i want bokeh in my videos thanks well you can use other sony cameras for example i think it's the uh, xv1 which is uh, uh, made for for vloggers but any camera is good if you want a really really nice bokeh then of course you might want to have a a full frame camera of course because it has a less depth of field but of course if if you are having uh, let's say like em5 mark 3 is a really good vlogging camera and have a 45 millimeter lens on that f1.8 but you need to have a bit of a more distance from the camera and also if you have the background way back then you will have nice nice blurry background but what's the best vlogging camera at the moment it's really hard to say i've tested as a vlogging camera the em5 mark 3 and that works pretty well but of course it is a bit smaller sensor than than full frame but i know yeah sony a7s3 is is an overkill for youtube videos in my opinion it's 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 very expensive and and too much and steve perry uh steve perry a canon wildlife shooter has some very useful videos on shooting moving birds and wildlife with techniques ap applicable applicable to uh, micro four thirds yeah most videos that are talking about photography it's not gear related in that sense you you have the same thing it doesn't matter what the camera is you still have some same uh, you know uh, rules of photography that apply to any size of camera where it doesn't really matter what the center size is it's, it, everything is a, about the same but of course there are some differences when it comes to usability of the cameras and which are better for wildlife and which are better for something else but in general uh, general photography videos are for everybody it doesn't matter what gear do you use it's a good point thanks thomas Oh, this is this is good on Google Books. You can read all the old popular photographer magazines. So fun to read the old stuff. Oh, thanks for that tip. That's something I need to go. I haven't really been aware that you can do that. That's interesting. And what's probably interesting if they have the ads too, because those are a lot of fun. Because I think ads used to be a lot more creative way back. And then a technical question about the shutter. What's the difference between still and anti-shock electronic shutter? Well, the still or the electronic shutter, which is which is the silent shutter, you have only electronic shutter. The anti-shake shutter is uh, combined. You have, I think, if I remember correctly, this first is the uh, silent shutter, and then you have the uh, mechanical shutter is shutting it down. So you have a combination with that. And the the reason they have a different is because electronic shutter has some down downsides but when then if you need to have anti-shake then you can use the anti-shake mode which is which is really good yeah randy has a good uh, uh what do you call good uh, tip for em5 mark III. that's a good camera for youtube videos Hi there, Alex. And then Perm Gataura is asking, thinking of moving to DxO Photo Lab 4, currently using Lightroom, but feels like expensive for what I need. Plus DxO Puro is built on views. Yes, Photo Lab 4 has the uh, Puro stuff. In Puro is actually 
three different uh, features that PhotoLab 4 has. So if you have PhotoLab 4, you don't need DxO Pure RAW. But if you're using Lightroom, then DxO Pure RAW is a good option. So you don't have to ha buy the whole software. But yes, PhotoLab 4 is very good image editing software. It's a bit overwhelming and it gets or you need to use it for a little while to get used to it. And, and for me, for example, it's a bit overwhelming because I'm so used to using Lightroom. I've been using Lightroom for ages and that I know and how to use it and get my, and I do get best results with that. And then sometimes if I need, I will use the pure raw from DxO to fix some faults that my images might have. Too much noise and, and then distortion and, and colors, which, which DxO Mark has the best algorithms to do since they have the optic modules that's why well flash menu is uh, something yeah i haven't really done i've probably done one or two videos about flashes and i think the other one was about the the macro flash the stf8 but that's that's a good point thanks thanks bobby i will i will consider that Yeah, that was that was really good. Good tip from from Randy. Thanks so much for for the info about the old photographic magazines. In what else do we have? Did I miss any questions while I was uh, blocking? There was quite a few that I needed to block, and probably there are some some more. I will block when I go. Yeah, they just. I don't know how this. <laughs> I hope I didn't block any any of the well yeah there are lots and lots of comments here that I did not but uh, good thing that they're they've gone now so are there any any more questions it's been it's been a bit over an hour already so the time flies when I'm doing these live streams and let's see if it was still on yes I have the monitoring the uh, thing here and um, let's see all right let's we have some more questions um, and then the question if size is not a consideration then what to choose between em1x or em1 mark 3 as they are nearly the same price well i would say that it depends a bit what are you what's your subject if you're doing wildlife flying birds and all that kind of stuff i would get the x but if you are you more with the uh, people photography street photography and stuff like that or just laser photography that you want to carry around your camera and have some you know images every now and then then i would get the m1 mark three because it has a bit better uh face uh, priority af but then em1x has a, a bit better uh, animal tracking af so i would say that that would decide if, if the size doesn't matter. Um, and then uh, I work half of the day in Photoshop Pro. Should I use Lightroom instead? Yeah, if if you have the access to Lightroom, if you have the photographer's plan from, from Adobe, then you have access to Lightroom CC classic, then I would use it. It's 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 better than Photoshop. I use, well, of course, it depends on what you're doing, but the, the, the basic image editing, Lightroom is a lot, lot better than Photoshop. Photoshop is kind of like a special software. If you need to do composite imaging, you need to add text to your images or do some special things, removing objects and stuff like that, then Photoshop is a bit better than Lightroom. And what I, how I do or, or use Photoshop is actually a plugin for Lightroom. I, do everything that I can in Lightroom. Then if I need to go do something in Photoshop, I will uh, press the right button on my mouse and edit in Photoshop, and then I will save it there and it will come back to Lightroom. And I think that's the best way for me and I, uh, because Lightroom was built for image editing and Photoshop was built for something else at the beginning. Um, let's see, there was, did I miss? Uh, 
And how do I feel about future sensors for future Olympus models? I think Micro Four Thirds needs a new sensor, and that's uh, something that uh, they they really need to do. For example, Panasonic was just launching a GS5 Mark II, or or there were rumors about it, and and they still have the same sensor and no GH6, and that was a big, big thing. When if you and that more about video for videography because GH5 is is one of the best uh, kind of like hybrid video cameras that there are on the market. But there, I know that there are really interesting micro four third sensors that are capable of doing really huge frame rates on 4K, for example. And that's something that I have never understood why Olympus is using old sensors. Maybe they have a deal with that and they have a, a big pile of sensors somewhere. And that's that's probably why but I, I agree that they they should need to have a new sensor because it doesn't matter what features you add if you still have the old sensor people most likely will feel a bit you know left out i think that that's something that they really should consider Uh, let's see next one. I'm looking at the comments. Um, yes, Randy is saying that they, that um, for the X there might be a new firmware. Yeah, it has been in the rumors, but I have no no knowledge. And and to be honest, if I did, I, I wouldn't wouldn't say. But uh, to be honest, I haven't heard any any official information about that. Yeah, and then Rahul is asking, did you speak to Red Thirty Five, which is uh, Jimmy Chang recently as he posted a video three weeks back saying he was struggling. Yes, I did actually. I contacted him after that video because uh, we've been becoming kind of friends and, and uh, on because of YouTube we've been, you know, collaborating a bit and, and actually I met him about a year ago in London when I was there. And, and yeah, he said that, that he's getting better and, and now he's posted a few more videos and that's that's really nice because it's um, uh, it's been tough in London really really tough with the, with the lockdowns and and you know when you're struggling with business you don't have any work or stuff like that and it's it's really really bad but i think he's he's doing a lot better yeah this uh, like randy says i just want astro focusing on the x yeah that's something that i really don't understand why they don't have the starry af because the camera is made for outdoor adventure photographers that are out there in the dark in the woods and stuff like that and then you don't have the, the starry af which you have on a, on a, another body i think it's it's a big fail i think they should add that to x i don't think that there is any any problem with the with the processor but i don't know why they haven't done that Yeah, like William said, he has actually a, a new video yesterday, I think it was, yeah. I haven't watched it yet, but I will, I will. Yeah, one thing Thomas is about asking about the sensor. Yeah, well, what we need is um, not necessarily more megapixels. Maybe it could be 24, I don't know, that, that'd be fine. But what we need is uh, a bit better dynamic range, which is a bit less than other cameras and i think that's one thing and of course on the video side of course you also need something a bit better because it's uh, it's falling a bit behind with the video call with the video features in olympus cameras you know other companies are bringing out some interesting stuff so that's why i think you need also improvement there but I, but I would say that the dynamic range is the, is the biggest issue maybe. And of course, if you can get one stop, less noise, be fine too, but it's not a, not a big problem. Well, let's see, what else do we have? By the way, we've had a very nice crowd and I'm sorry about the, <laughs> the big attack from, from some, I don't know where that came from. Um, <clears throat> And then Alex is asking, is there any place to use my old 50 millimeter F2 macro or upgrade it to 60 millimeter macro? It don't need fast focus most of the time. Well, it it all depends. If you're really happy with the 50 millimeter and the image quality, 
and you don't need the AF. Why getting a new lens? I don't think there is no difference. If you have a possibility to test that lens and see if it's any better, then of course it could be something. The 60 millimeter is weather sealed, so that could be one thing. If if if, if you want to photograph in, in in rain or anything like that, then yes, that could be could be something. But other other than that, if if you're happy with the 50 millimeter, then no problem with that. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, this, how can we have 14 dislikes? Probably the, the people that were spamming, they, they probably hit that. But uh, the thing is that usually the if you give a dislike, then it only affects their algorithm so that they don't see my videos that often. And, and the way they commented, I don't care. It's a good thing if they, they just stay away. So it doesn't really hurt my stuff that much. So no problem with that. And let's see. Oh, the 50 millimeter AF is it's from Olympus. Oh, okay. I didn't realize sorry, I didn't realize about that. Then yeah, of course, then I wouldn't, you know, only reason would be the maybe the uh, what do you call the uh, weather ceiling? And let's see what Raymond says. Is firmware for cameras only made from brands or is there a chance to write from external companies or programmers? Not at a the moment, there isn't. There used to be, I remember when I was using Canon gear, there was this uh, magic lantern that wrote firmwares that you could, uh, you, you downloaded the firmware and then you had it in your memory card. When you set up the memory card in the car, it, the camera read the firmware and you could do stuff that the regular camera couldn't do of course it was not recommended from canon but it was an interesting thing but not at the moment and i think it would be interesting if they had kind of like apps to your camera that i could add time lapse i could add starry af for example as an app to my camera i don't know why they really haven't done that i think sony tried that but it didn't really take off well maybe the photographers are so kind of like old-fashioned and they want things to be different i don't know but it would be interesting but not not at the moment really uh, let's see yeah uh, Perm is asking, does a pro lens always equal sharper images versus kit lens? Yes, it does. It doesn't mean that the kit lens is bad, but pro lenses are better. And what's good about the pro lenses too is that they do have more consistent quality. They are, you know, all are really good, but there might be sometimes you might have a big, a bigger tolerance in, in other lenses that are not pro lenses. So that you have a bit better lens than than maybe a, a same lens with the with the which is different so that's that's why it's is if you want top-notch quality then pro lenses are are better let's see yeah this could be like john allen says maybe a 12 megapixel sensor for video like sony have done yeah that's that's true and also gh5s has i think has 10 million 10, 10 megapixels only and it's 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 a really good video camera hi hi Keith south south of France how how is everything in south, southern France let's see oh this is interesting I haven't heard about this I did see in a forum that someone made custom custom from where where for Olympus cameras to add features not available to the lower OMD series. That is something that I haven't heard of. That's interesting. If you have a link and remember where it's at, please send that to me because that'd be interesting to, to see. And chat is not working really. And this is interesting. 
Let's see. Depth of field. Can Olympus please make a built-in software filter to, to replicate DOF for other synthesizers as the two-time crop factor gives little control over the depth of field? Yeah, that would be something interesting because like mobile phones has some algorithms and, and stuff that can make the background blur like it was with the lens. But of course, it's a bit different. But th that's something that would be really interesting to to implement to a micro four thirds camera because that would take the advantage of full frame totally away if, if they can make make a good depth of uh, or doff thing that that would uh, kind of like uh, have an algorithm that would figure out where where the softness of the background should be and where the image should be sharp that'd be totally interesting yeah Randy is saying the X can actually do the astro tracker like Pentax do the GPS and IBIS. Can it really? I know that Pentax can. The X can actually really, I haven't really know that, that they can do the astro tracker really. I know that Pentax can, but I, I didn't realize that X can. Are you sure? Or did I misunderstand? <clears throat> Fernando is asking, have you tried Fujifilm system? I'm a Nikon user, but I love the Fuji colors. I did actually, a few weeks ago, I had the X100V for a few days. I think I had it for a week and I, I made a video. So if you want to watch that, there, it, I do have a video about the Fuji X100V on my channel. It was um, a very interesting camera. There were a few things that I did not like about it. And that was, uh, of course, first when you open or turn it on and start looking at the menus is like overwhelming because it's totally different no some some even some of the terms were different the words were different and you had to figure out that and then i but i watched a few videos to learn about that and about that camera and and used it for a week for street photography and, and yes it was it was a nice camera it was a bit too wide for my liking i usually like to have a bit more tighter a field of view when I do in street photography, and then it did not have an have an ibis. But um, at the, at that week we had a really sunny weather, so it wasn't really a problem. I didn't have to use really long shutter speeds, but that was one one concern. But yes, I did like. I think they made a marvelous camera, and, and they have a bit of a different color theory. It's a different. It's an X trans sensor, which is a different from from the other cameras, which are using the Bayer technology sensors. But it's it's a, it's. I think they they are into something. Oh, I mean, it has the hardware to pull it off. Yes, it has. So I think they should add it. Okay, sorry, I understood a bit wrong what, what you meant. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see, speaking of Dov, uh, speaking of Dov, I like using lenses at the widest aperture exactly because the edges are softer. Thus, replicating more bokeh. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's a bit softer, and and sometimes even the vignetting is is not that bad, if you don't mind that vignetting. I do a bit because I, if I want to do vignetting, I want to do it myself, and not be stuck with the the way the, the the lens makes it. But yeah, that's that's true. That sometimes the soft edges are really nice. It, it kind of like concentrates your your view, or the viewer sees the the sharper part that's in the middle first and then you have nice blur in the in the edges that's true yeah this is an interesting question and i actually had a video about bokeh and was talking about the exact same thing and then andres is saying that i think people are overusing bokeh shallow depth of field what do you think yes bokeh is kind of like a new thing because uh, way back people didn't really use bokeh as, as a way of making images of course when it's a new thing and it's an, a bit interesting and, and, and yeah sometimes it's really nice but it's not to be used every time if we if you look at the old uh, street photography classics or street photographer classics uh, then they kind of like stop down to f8 
and uh, they wanted everything to be sharp for two reasons of course it was um, uh, an aesthetic thing that that's what how they wanted to see the world and then the second thing is that they did not have to focus so fast in because they had manual focus and it was a bit harder that's a, that's another reason and, and i would say that the af getting better we have more possibilities to blur the background because when the depth of field is really really shallow then you need to nail your focus exactly if it's a bit off then it doesn't look good it's like making portraits sometimes if you have uh, let's say you have a full frame camera with 1.2 lens you your depth of field is is you know so tiny that that if you use autofocus it might focus you know on the eyebrows and then the eyes will be soft a bit you need to be really really careful when focusing if you if you're using shallow depth of field so i i agree that it is overused it is sometimes nice but but at the same time is overused and it's kind of a lazy way also because when you have background blur a lot you can hide things you don't have to take into consideration what's in the background because it's just blurring and, and you kind of like throwing out a lot of possibilities of storytelling if, if you just blur it out the background if, if you have something in the background that's interesting then it's a lot harder to make the image so that it is adding up to the image and so i can understand that it is it is sometimes hard yeah omds seems very aggressive with their m1x price reduction it makes me wonder if they are clearing inventory before version 2 comes along well that's usually what they say but i haven't uh, heard any and only information that has been official and we have been uh, told is that the camera what they say is a wow camera some flagship camera maybe that is coming in the end of this year or early next year and i think that's something that uh, i do believe i don't think that they will have a camera anytime soon but it will be maybe in october november which is has been the usual months that Olympus has launched cameras. They usually have launched on, on February, June, and October, November. Usually three cameras if they have. But uh, of course, now that there's been the transition, it takes a bit more time. So they might skip. They did skip the February, and I think they're going to skip on June too. So I would expect October, November, the next camera. But this is just my educated guess and what i what i know so far yeah let's see yeah that's true also tony b says that when talking about the bokeh the old photographers used f64 to make sure everything was sharp exactly and there was actually a photo club called f64 which had some famous photographers like ansel adams and and people like that and that's exactly what they did. They 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 used, but of course the cameras were where the size of the film was was really huge. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's like Randy says that bokeh has its place. I don't use it much with my style. Only now and then to separate the back background from my subject. Yeah, that's that's exactly the the right or one of the good ways is to because we want to always look around if you have let's say that we have a, a photograph of a person we always want to look around what's behind the head so that there are no you know things in the back that will make the person look funny and that's why having a bit shallow depth of field might make those distracting elements a bit less distracting but you know sometimes you you need to have more depth of field so that the image is interesting And Perm is uh, asking, looking to uh, rent a pro lens for a friend's wedding, casual informal shots, would, would you suggest 17 or 25 or zoom? That's a tough one. It depends a bit on your style and also how much light you have in the, in the venue. If it's really dark, then I would get the 17 millimeter f1.2 pro lens. That's, that's a real beauty. It's one of the best pro lenses. But it, it all depends on, on your style. But then, of course, if you have a 17 millimeter, you have to get a bit closer. And with the 12 to 40 millimeter f2.8 Pro Zoom, 
you do have the the option to zoom you don't have to be that close because you have a bit more reach and and that's i would say that it depends on your style and let's see oh this is always interesting by the way there is a new m micro four third channel brian james based in the uk he was a full frame photographer but now converted to micro four third mostly panasonic he builds himself that micro four thirds guy interesting thanks for the tip i need to i haven't come across his channel but i need to check that out it's always good that there will be more uh youtubers that are that are talking about micro four thirds let's see yeah they were talking about the doff that's good that's really good let's see what we have uh, more questions it's a good thing that you you know you talk to each other over there that's good and help each other that's that's what i really like uh yeah there's always um when you're talking about uh, Panasonic lenses on, on Olympus cameras, there's one thing that they are built a bit differently. And for example, the uh, chromatic aberration or purple fringing are, are, are fixed with a bit of a different way. So some, some of the Panasonic lenses look really horrible or the images look really horrible if you're using Olympus camera. And it's not because of the lens is horrible. It's such the correction is done differently in Panasonic. And that's why there might be in some lenses so always um, check if you if you are getting a Panasonic lens on Olympus camera, uh, or or the vice versa too. It might be might be pretty horrible sometimes. Uh, let's see if I missed some questions earlier there. Not really. I think I've covered everything. That was an interesting about the channel. Thanks for that. I always like when, when people recommend new channels to watch because it's always refreshing. Of course, I want you guys to watch all my videos all the time and very long, but I understand that 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 you need to watch other channels. That's that's really good because that, that gives you a lot more information than just what I think I have my opinions and someone else has some other points and some some other opinions and we're all different and that's that's really good that we have a big community of of micro four thirds youtubers that are that are doing photography content and, and using using Panasonic and Olympus camera that's 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 so great yeah this is interesting about like what fernando is saying the dream that i could not fulfill was to move to micro four third here in my country argentina there is practically no market for me it would have been the perfect system yeah this is interesting that south america is for some reason like like in brazil for example they, they don't have any dealers or no one is selling uh olympus cameras and i think nikon is the same thing it's really strange because it's a huge country, a huge market. And I would think that that would be something to do, but I don't know what, what's the reason. It's, it's beats me, it's, it's odd. Uh, let's see. Oh, then there is another channel which I don't know about, Terry Lane. I need to check that out too. That's that's interesting. Let's see what else do we have. I still have about twenty minutes. I need to do something else. Uh, I have some appointment after after I finish this live stream. So so I need to need to end this in twenty minutes but uh let's see if you have any any questions here and there are probably some new people watching i want to remind you of my assignment for may it's light and shadow and i do have a video where are a lot of things about light and shadow it's a long video about 20 minutes a bit more i think it's for even 23 minutes so there's lots and lots of information about light and also there is a link where you can find all the instructions how to send the image and, and the live stream will be on 27th of may and the deadline for the image is the 26th so be sure to send me an image that has 
light and shadows as a big part of the composition of the story of, of everything. And, and I've said many times about light that we do need light when we're making photographs. And when we have light, we need to have shape, we need to have 3D, and that for that we need shadows. And without shadows, everything will be flat and and most likely the image won't be that interesting. And let's see what else. And Andres is saying, you know, I tried DxO and ended up buying it. It made 12,800 ISO image look really good with new denoise software. Noise isn't a problem anymore. That's true. That's true. It's, it's, it's remarkable how much they can do with the, with the algorithm. That's, that's, that is totally awesome. That is totally awesome. And then, uh, and then uh, Mika is asking, do you know Panasonic and Olympus make sensors by themselves or use third party manufacturers? Well, it's not official, but uh, at least I know that Olympus is using third party sensors. And I think all Panasonic, at least in some of their cameras, I'm not really sure if Panasonic is making sensors. I, to be honest, I don't really know who are the sensor makers i know sony makes sensors and i think canon makes for themselves so there's a rumor that some of the sensors in, in olympus cameras are made by sony but not really sure golden william is saying golden hour shooting in 20 minutes and yeah talking about golden hour and, and the blue blue hour is uh, that here in the northern hemisphere here in Finland, we do have golden hours and, and, and the blue blue hour lasts forever, hours. And that's really interesting because sometimes I've been in, in Southern Europe photographing and seeing the, the, the blue hour. You can get a couple of images, but here you can photograph for a whole hour and it's same probably there in Bornholm. And it's really, really good. But uh, And then there is actually about if you are interested in astral photography, there will be a, do you call it total eclipse? Is it when when you know the Earth is between the the sun and moon, so that there will be a sh shadow in the moon? But unfortunately, you can't see that in Europe or or only in North in North America. So if the ones that are from North America keep keep watch of the moon because you will have the it's not eclipse, is it? But you know when the when the Earth is making the shadow on the moon and the and what, what's that called? Sorry, I don't know the word, but it's it's happening here in, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, let's see. What else do we have? Yeah, Alex is asking, I'm going to buy 12 to 100 millimeter. How it works in macro mode? It actually is not a macro lens, but it can focus real, real close. And that's why it, it is a very good close-up lens, but it's not a macro, but it, it does. It does work very well. And if you want to crop a bit, then you might have kind of like a macro. But yes, it is a, it is a good choice for, for uh, close-up photography. Yeah, it's called Moon Eclipse. Denmark gets darker at night, but the Faroe Island has blue hour all night. Yeah, that's that's true. In the in, up in the north, it's it's during like here in Finland, the northern part, there is the sun doesn't set at all during the summer. But it, then then on the other hand, during the winter, doesn't rise at all, so it's dark all day around for months. Which is I I could not live up there in the north. Uh, let's see. Yeah, lunar eclipse. That's what it's called. Yes, thanks. That's also true. The 100 to 400 millimeters, nearly macro. You can get as close as 1.3 meters. Yes. And I, in my video, I tested it. And, you know, if you have a, a leaf about this size, you can get it so that you can crop it. And, and have a kind of like a close-up of a leaf, which is about this size. And it's it works really well for that too. 
and and the good thing is that you you, you can get you don't have to be that close like a meter and a half is is far enough for little uh like butterflies and, and other little creatures that they don't get too scared so if you if you have a like 60 milli macro you need to go go really close and that might scare the the animal or whatever you're photographing oh okay thomas is um saying like excuse me <clears throat> But in the U.S., the lunar eclipse will only total in the West. Here in Georgia, for example, about 25% coverage. Okay, so it's on that side. And I, uh, sorry about my misinformation that, uh, that I wasn't wasn't clear enough. But yeah, that's a good. That's good. And then uh, uh, Tom is asking, what's going on with your Olympus Visionary deal? I don't know. No idea what happens. They said that it's going to be solved in April, but haven't heard anything after that. I will have a meeting with them on Monday about some uh, online teaching that I will do here in Finland. But other than that, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, what do you think of, of the 35 mm f2 Zuiko lens? I've been following your reviews, but haven't done any review on this lens. No, I haven't. I haven't used that lens at all. There are so many lenses that I would like to use, but just can't get hold of them. And for certain, I'm not going to buy all those lenses. That would be one solution, but that would be too expensive for me. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, this is uh, something that William is saying that my friend managed to use MC14 on the 12 to 100 millimeter with the same way as the 60 millimeter extension to fix. Then you get a bit macro on the 12 to 100 millimeter. Yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, I've tried that, but my macro or the extension tubes are too too small. And if you could, sh William, share what brand of uh, extension tubes those were, because that would be an interesting topic for a video. And I, I actually would like to buy the extension tube so that I can use the the uh, extenders with those. That'd be really interesting. Uh, let's see. Oh, let's see what else do we have here yeah it's the the 10 millimeter extension zooms work but the 16 millimeters do not yeah yeah thanks if, if you just uh, you know email me you can find my email in my in my video description somewhere it's right there in the bottom you just have to scroll through it's in the in the in the lower part so send me an, an email or share that in in the facebook group of this channel yeah then uh, raymond is asking is the body uh, from the m5 mark ii titanium stronger material or quite the same uh, i think it's quite the same but uh, now there's there is some odd comments again but they are hidden somebody is spamming again but uh, doesn't show doesn't show at all and uh let's see what else do we have here yeah thanks andrew yes i am i am i'm fine it's i'm, I'm very very grateful for that Yeah, thank you, Tom. I really enjoy your channel. I will continue watching. Thank you so much. Let's see. Any news regarding the 150 to 400 Pro? Well, it is uh, a bit delayed, I think. I know that some people have already gotten it, but I'm not really sure how, how many. What's the, what's the distribution? 
there because I saw like a month or two ago, I saw a lot of pictures that people been, you know, taking pictures of that uh, lens that they just gotten. But I don't know what, what's the situation right now. Let's see, what is this? What's this going on? I need to check these comments that are. Yeah, somebody is uh, spamming again. But it's held for review, so it won't show on the on the stream, which is good. Yeah, this is an interesting question that Plato is is replying to Tom D. I have a feeling that Panasonic is not investing much in micro four thirds either. Example GH52. That is true. That is true, and and it's a it's a bit pity. And we we need to see if the rumors are true. If they are, that's a pity. But uh, I think um, micro four third is is well and live in a way that there are a lot of other manufacturers that are that are using video manufacturers. Blackmagic is using micro four thirds. Zcam is using micro four third sensors, and I think Sharp is using micro four third sensors. And uh, I don't know any other camera companies that much. There are a lot of lot of camera companies in in in, in consortium. That are like DJI is part of Micro Four Thirds consortium. Then you never know what if they do a Micro Four Thirds camera. We never know. But yeah, you, you're true that there is um, something going on, and we will have to see what happens in in the fall and, and next year, where where, where Micro Four Thirds is heading. Let's see. You know, Randy has seen that 150 to 400 millimeter on lens rentals, 700 bucks a week. Well, that's quite a lot, but of course it's 10, I think it's $7,000, the price of the lens. So you can get it for 700, but that's, that's a lot of money. You can do a lot of things with 700. So if you really need to, to test that, that's, that's um, something interesting. <coughs> Yeah, this is also an interesting question from Klaus. What are your next photography projects? Well, I do have um, two things in mind. One is that I need to get back into doing portraiture. And that's something that I will make videos about. I, I will do some environmental portraits and some, some studio type portraits and stuff like that. I just really need that. Maybe it's because I've been, you know, not seeing too many people lately and that's and not traveling and stuff like that where you see a lot of people, even though I'm not a very uh, extrovert person but still you know you know, I, I like to be around people anyways and photograph them and then the second thing is just general street photography which i used to do quite a bit back in the days and haven't done that that much either so those those are two not particular subject but those those two things are the the stuff that i am hoping that i can do during the summer <coughs> Oh gosh, not not again. <clears throat> and let's see what else do we have. Yeah, this is an interesting thought by from from Plato. Uh, my feeling is Panasonic may drop out of photography altogether. The FF cameras are not a big success either. Yeah, that that be really interesting, and and that's true. The I'm not really sure how the L mount has has sold cameras, or Panasonic has sold the L mount cameras. It's it's uh, something you don't really see them that much or hear about them that much, and that's that's a really interesting thing. I think the for example the S5 is is a stunning camera. It's it's really really pretty small i think it's about the same size size as the g9 of course the lenses are bigger but the, but the body size is about the size of g9 which is about the size of the m1 cameras so 
and they've they've made a really really great camera but i don't really know too many people that are actually using those which is a pity because um, they are really really good cameras and, and interesting to see what happens all right cool andres is has just ordered the 45 f 1.2 for those bokeh moments congrats it's a good lens it's i love it mm. yeah jorg uh jorg is saying portrait is really fun i like creativity with the models i never thought until recently yeah it is it is it is a lot of fun it's not easy portrait is one of the hardest uh genres of photography to be honest and it's really 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 hard to get a good portrait you you need really of course these uh glamour type when you have pretty girls in bikinis are, are kind of easy because you know when you have a really good looking <laughs> looking person it's, it doesn't really matter how the light is it, you can't really ruin those photographs but if you have you know photographing ordinary people that are not used to being in front of a camera it's it's really hard to get the best out of them and that's it's and, and to make them look at their best usually they are totally fine looking but it's the photographer who just cannot kind of like record that beauty that they have and, and then of course if you want to tell stories with portraits it's even harder but i i try to do a few videos during the summer about all this yeah, this is always when you have a new system, the L mount uh, lens line has not matured yet. That's true. That's always the biggest thing. You might have a good camera, as I said, the S5s and the S1, not really nice cameras. But of course, if you don't have enough lenses, and of course, and then also the lenses are quite expensive because they're bigger, they are full frame lenses, they are the more expensive. That might be also one thing that has made it a bit struggle for Panasonic but as I said I don't know any numbers but that's just my feeling that it doesn't been selling that good yeah here's another another comment about the L mount and the L mount doesn't seem that attractive to go all in and that's true it, it, it takes a while and, and I hope they have the the ability and the the patience and the money to to do that. Yeah, this is also about portraiture. When I take photos, I don't like the person to look into the camera. I like to catch the moment, the feeling. Yeah, that's one one really way. It's it's um it's like a candid portrait, and that's that's really really something to to also do if if you, if you see someone in their thoughts and they don't know that you're making the image. That's that's always a good way. And, and that works with people that are not very familiar with uh, in front of a camera if you can make a candid portrait out of them you know that's usually comes out better but of course it's a bit different thing when you have the eye contact and i i, I like the eye contact because then you have the viewer kind of have a connection with the model when they you know looking into their eyes they're looking each other and there there might be some some connection and if it's a a very uh kind of like interesting looking people you might even feel a connection between the model and i think then a portrait is is done its job but you know we, we like different things and, and and definitely candid portraits are are or they have their place it's 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 really really interesting to to have all different kinds of portraits uh let's see and then about the 75 millimeter is in the pro version. I don't know why. I don't know why they don't, or they don't, they haven't made the pro pro version. Maybe it's because the 75 is pro grade lens anyways. And this is important. <laughs> don't remember, don't forget to hit the like button. That the like button hit is much appreciated. Can you contact at Olympus if you want to suggest extra features? If so, who is the contact? Uh, it depends. I think you should check the OMDS uh, website, Europe, or wherever you're from, and uh, try to send email from there. I don't really know the contact right now. I know my contact here in Finland, but uh, 
but it's hard to hard to say who you contact they don't really have any kind of like centralized uh, tip email address but try to check out their website and and see if there are any any contacts that could possibly be someone who who could be interested in that than they are i know they always want to hear feedback from from photographers but unfortunately they haven't done it so that it's really easy to give that feedback uh, let's see <clears throat> Let's see. Do we have any? All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> 